What's up, guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. Today, we're finishing the book of Samuel. We're looking at 2 Samuel 23 and 24. And what I want you to see is there's some good and there's some bad that David does. First of all, in chapter 23, he has some good because he praises God for the good things that God has done. And one of those most important things is right here in verse 5, where it says that God has made an everlasting covenant with David. And really, this is David remembering 2 Samuel chapter 7, at least that's what we knew it as. Um, he knew it as the promise that God made to him. And the promise was that a descendant of David would always sit on the throne of David. And if you think about it, it's like, well, how did that play out in history? It played out with Solomon, his son, becoming king later on. And also, all these kings that led to the ultimate king, the son of David, the Messiah, Jesus, to be sitting on the throne forever. So we see that here. We also see at the end of chapter 23, some of the mighty men of David are remembered here and written down. And this is really cool. You read some stories of some things that they did. But chapter 24 is a bad story. It's the last big thing that David does, and it's a bad thing. It says that he took a census of the people, which means he wanted them all counted up. And you might say, well, what's bad about that? In America, we do a census every 10 years. Um, why was this such a bad thing for them to do? Well, um, the reason is because uh, they were supposed to trust in the Lord, the kings were, instead of trying to get a big number of men in an army. They weren't supposed to worry about that. And David, at the end of his life, worrying about that showed that David didn't trust God in his heart fully. And it says after he did this, his heart was struck in verse 10, and he knew that he sinned greatly. And as he discusses this with God himself, um, it says, first of all, that he goes through a, a person named Gad, um, a prophet, and it says that God gave David some options. He said you could either have three years of famine in the land as a punishment. You could either have three months of being pursued by your enemies in war, or you could have three days of plague. And David says, I'd rather be in the hands of God than in the hands of men. So he gets those three days of plague. How many people died in the land of Israel? It said 70,000 men. So, so much for taking a census. It said at the beginning that there were 800,000 valiant men in Israel and 500,000 men in Judah. So you've got over a million men who are able to serve. And well, guess what God does? In three days, he wipes out 70,000 of them. And the whole point here is to show David and the whole nation, you need to trust in me. And it's also to punish David for not trusting him. But the end of this story ends up pretty well because God finishes this plague on this threshing floor on the top of the city of David. If the city of David sits on this hill, this threshing floor where they would thresh out the wheat, it sat on the top of the hill. The plague stopped there. David bought the land and he would later have his son build the temple on it. So where this plague stops here at the end of 2 Samuel 24 is where Solomon would later pick up all of the materials that David ha had gathered and build the temple for God. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel here. And that's where the end of the book of Samuel. So check out in the New Testament, Luke 22. We're starting in the middle of the chapter. Luke 22, 31. What we're seeing here is the road towards the cross. We're seeing Peter. We're seeing the disciples. We're even seeing Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane that he wants this cup to pass from him. And what we see here is Jesus putting himself under God's will, saying, I will do whatever God wants, where Peter, on the other hand, won't put himself under Jesus's will, what Jesus wants. He won't put himself under that. But Jesus, the perfect example, he's putting himself under what God wants. And what that looks like for him at this point is that he will go to the cross and he will suffer in the place of sinners and he will die on their behalf and he will get for them the, the righteousness that they need to have eternal life. And that's what Jesus is about to do. And you have to think that if you're Jesus at this point, you are not wanting to do this. And that's exactly how he felt. He even describes that to God in prayer. But he says, not my will, but yours be done. And that's something we should think through as Christians all the time. We want to be praying a similar thing. We want to have a similar thing in our minds that we don't want to do what we want to do. We want to submit ourselves to God in all areas of our life. Jesus does it here. It takes him to the cross, which is good for us in the end. But also, if you think back to our Old Testament reading, if David would have done something similar, if David would have submitted himself to God's will from the start, there never would have been that plague. There never would have been those 70,000 men who died. If David would have submitted himself to God, he would have avoided those consequences. I think that's an important reminder for us. We need to submit ourselves to God's will no matter what it is. If God's word says it, we need to be willing to do it. 
If God's word says we should do something, we should be willing to obey no matter what it costs, even if it's costly. And for David, it was really just a matter of him trusting God and not doing something. Really, David would have been more righteous if he didn't do this thing as opposed to crossing over God's line of of not trusting him. So a helpful reminder for us, and hopefully it's a helpful reminder for you as you read the daily Bible reading today. We want to be like Christ. We don't want to be like David at the end of his life, not trusting God. We want to be like Jesus, trusting God um, through everything. So that's all we got for today. We'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot. (music) 